In this abandoned part of the Belgrade, in the center of the city near Danube, came new population, Jewish population from Austro-Hungarian Empire, wanting to help to develop one newly created country in uh, Southeast Europe, country which just gained in the mid-19th uh, century its independence. The genocide against Jewish population during the Second World War was extremely tough in Belgrade. In 1942, in a very efficient campaign where they, the Germans have been testing their buses in whom they associate a Jewish population, uh, the, nearly all of them has been killed. Uh, this part of Belgrade still keeps the memory of Jewish population living there in Jewish Museum and in the Jewish Cultural Center. Kalmyk population, living a little bit further, came with the Russians in the 20s, escaping of communism. But they disappeared. They built a Buddhist temple, because that was a Buddhist population, as the Russian Russian built a Russian Orthodox Church, which is still there in the center of the city. On this road, Roma population, they used also to live in the very center of the city, but then due to different gentrification processes, they've been gone. In their theatrical project, in this bus, as the bus was going, that theater was re uh, revitalizing the memory of the population on those lost neighbors, neighbors which are not anymore with us. But one of the most important uh, of their theatrical project is exactly theater in the politics of remembrance. Every 11th of July, on the day of the remembrance of the victims of genocide in Srebrenica, they are making a theater performance in the public square of Belgrade. Every year, a different performance, together with several non-governmental organizations, such as Women in Black. On the poster you can see around this theatre performance, which are kind of a stage, so that the, that the audiences, incidental audience, which passers by, can just immediately see what's that about, is saying oblivion and science is also a cry. So theatre performance in Belgrade are dealing a very important job in a situation where our parliament and our politicians are avoiding those issues. One of the very important uh, festivals in the scope of politics of memory and remembrance was a Belef, Belgrade Summer Festival. In different memory spaces, such like powder storage, Zindan Gate, throughout Kalemegdan Park, on Knez Mihailova Street, on Andrei Cevenat's different corner of the street where our most famous uh, Nobel Prize winner writer lived, different river Icelands such as Ada Sigalia, etc., they recreated with artists different theatre or created different theatre performances specifically done for this uh, festival. These projects within Belef Festival has been very important public art challenge for power authorities, for cultural authorities. Sometimes cultural authorities say, oh, but this street art, it's a very low level uh, art achievement. But in fact, they didn't want to face or to accept that uh, something can be done and have a very important artistic and ethical value, although done outside of the institutional system supported by cultural policies. And also, public art challenged a lot cultural values of population, stereotypes. You see here on the picture the postcards done by a Russian group, AES, specifically for Festival Belov. They wanted to challenge 
phantasm of Belgrade population, of common men, this fear that Albanian Muslim population is going to come to Belgrade to conquer it. On this picture there is our parliament which is transformed in mosque. And I have to say personally, I was extremely worried that this kiosk, because they wanted to have a specific, specific kiosk to distribute different kind, those kind of postcards. And I was very much afraid that a group of nationalist youth might come, might see that and consider that as a provocation, beat them. Uh, fortunately, none of this had happened. But uh, audience was having what we call some bitter smile looking at those postcards. So, what I wanted to say is that multicultural city of Belgrade is not only a text, it's a palimpsest. It's a complex, multi-layered narrative where we have to incite the best and the most relevant artists to add their own narratives to common collective memory and perception of the city. As producers, trying to enable those narratives uh, to, to be used, to enter the urban texture, to enter all these urban noises, rhythms, dynamism of the city, this imaginary construct such as city identity might become acceptable for the values of all those who describe themselves as urban generation. This is also something which exists specifically on the Balkan, this division between urban people and those who might live in the city but are not considered as urban. There is also one sociological new term called a urban population, something in between. And to finish this presentation, I selected the text of Ivo Andrić and I will just read it. The sky above Belgrade is wide and high, unstable but always beautiful. Even during winter serenities with their icy splendor, even during summer storms, when the whole of it turns into a single gloomy cloud, which, driven by the mad wind, carries the rain mixed with the dust of a Pannonian plain. Even in spring, when it seems that it also blooms along with the ground, even in autumn, when it grows heavy with the autumn stars in swarms. Always beautiful and rich, as a compensation to this strange town for everything that isn't there and a consolation because of everything that shouldn't be there. I hope that my students are going to explore this unexpected, multicultural, hybrid, but also very hidden face of Belgrade by themselves and that by their exploration of different neighborhoods, sites, are going to discover this performativity of the Belgrade streets and that they are going to contribute to this performativity of the Belgrade streets with their own achievement and their own performances.